again, good evening, everyone. We appreciate you braving the weather and coming here tonight. We appreciate you being here, and certainly we wish you a safe trip and enjoyable evening while you're here. My name is Tom Yankee, and I'm, I have the pleasure of serving as a president of the Heart of Wisconsin, and it is my pleasure as well to welcome you to this meeting for the Chamber of Commerce, our annual dinner meeting, and one of the functions of this is to call that annual meeting to order. So we'll be starting the meeting and dinner fairly shortly. This may be a reminder if you haven't had an opportunity to enter the uh, annual raffle. Obviously, we're thankful for all the help uh, to, from our generous raffle sponsors. Before we get started as well, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank our annual dinner sponsors, Heartland Farms, Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa, Current Technologies, and Security Health Plan. So thank you to them. Our community is also made better by all of our public servants. And looking out a little earlier, we have several of them here. So at this time, we'd like to ask any of our elected public servants to please stand up and be recognized. Thank you for what you do on our behalf. Also, I'd like to take this time to introduce the Heart of Wisconsin staff to everyone. Um, for those of us that are on the board, we've had the opportunity to work closely with, and we've been fortunate that we have a group of people that have been part of the Heart for a number of years. And on a week-to-week -week and day-to-day -day basis, we see the passion with which they approach their work on all of our behalf, their concern for the community, and how much effort and time they put in to trying to make Wisconsin Rapids a better place for all of us. So, many of you may not know all of them, but I'd like to take this moment and ask them to stand up and get some recognition, as we mentioned. First of all, Melissa Riker, President. <laughs> Krista Kuhn, the Director of Programs and Events. Back there. And as well, Sharon Zeman, the Director of Finance and Operations. Also, we'd like to recognize the Heart of Wisconsin Board of Directors that are here tonight and ask them, as we mentioned, uh, call off their name to please stand. First of all, Pam Kuhn, who in her day job is with Paper City Savings. Joan Bakowski of Cellcom. Jeff Siegler from WFHR, WLJY, and C. Hafer Broadcasting. Matt Zacker from Express Recycling Solutions. Sells Farrar to Riverview Hospital. Okay. Ann Taylor of Riverview Hospital. Sharon Bus of Reda Shannon Bus of Renaissance. Learning, also serving as a treasurer. Sorry, Shannon. <laughs> Chris Luddington of Taco John's. <laughs> Jeff Burton of Urkel Worldwide, also served as a secretary. Jeff. <laughs> Pam Anderson of Wood Trust Bank. Pam, I think, is, is not here tonight. Nate Weidman, First Weber. And as well, Pete Taylor of Taylor Consulting. Thank you. All right, so I think we have some of those details done. Without further ado, enjoy your dinner. We'll uh, get started in probably 20 minutes or so and continue on with the meeting. Thank you. He braved the weather and drove up from uh, Madison today, got special dispensation to get out of some of the responsibilities that he had there to address us and make a few comments to us. So. As an introduction for him, um, Mr. Culp is from Stratford, Wisconsin, just up the road. He founded a roofing and sheet metal business in 1985 and has added energy efficient insulation and alternative energy companies, including solar photovoltaic roofing and compressed natural gas. On November 19, 2013, he was elected to the Wisconsin State Assembly as a Republican. In his first run for political office, he won the 69th Assembly District, 
with 67% of the vote. He was sworn in on December 4th, 2013. In addition to those responsibilities, he's a vice president of the National Roofing Contractors Association and is a past chairman of the NRCA Government Relations Committee and also serves as a board member serving on the U.S. Small Business Association Regulatory Fairness Board. Gulps of Stratford, the company that he founded, was awarded the Small Business of the Year by the Wausau Region Chamber in 2012 and projects the company has completed have been featured in numerous national trade publications. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Bob Cole. Good evening, everyone. And I'm not sure how fortunate you are to have me here, but it is always fun for me to see a new group of people and uh, some old friends, or I should say some friends who I've known for a while. They're not necessarily old, but uh, in any case, it is good to be here tonight. And I, uh, braving the uh, roads coming up wasn't too bad. It was uh, wet, but not slippery. And I was happy to be able to get out of uh, the, the session down there because, uh, well, I'm not bored with it by any stretch, but it is uh, nevertheless gets a little bit tedious on occasion. And this is this won't be a political speech because one of the things that I've never had a lot of admiration for people who are in political office who get up in a group like this and give a political stump speech. I think that's uh, kind of poor form. So if I do allude to anything in the government, it'll be a matter of concepts and without uh, any any judgments. But. The introduction's already been given. Uh, Tom didn't talk about uh, my seven kids, and I could talk about the two who are teachers teaching in Taiwan, or my daughter who just graduated from uh, nursing school from North Central Tech two weeks ago, or my son who's a mechanic at the airport in Merrill, my three kids who are still at home. Uh, but uh, that would probably take all 20 minutes, so I won't, I won't do that either. Um, you know, I started my business in 1985, as, uh, as Tom mentioned. And uh, I, I actually felt called to the ministry, just to be frank with you and straight up. And uh, a wise mentor at that point said, no, Bob, what this area doesn't need is more preachers. What it needs is someone to start a business and employ people at a living wage and give them opportunities to have their dignity worked out in that way. And so I kind of took that as a life calling, really. And that's, that's, uh, that's where I still am. And, on the uh, you know along the way, new opportunities came up, uh, different uh, entities, as uh, as Tom mentioned, and it's been a lot of fun. And then jumping into the uh, political arena, been very active there with the National Roofing Contractors Association. So it wasn't a, a real stretch for me to get there. And how do I balance all of that as a legislator? That's that's a good question. I put together over the years a very good management team at our company, and uh, I won't. Uh, this is not an advertisement for our company either. But you know, I've been asked a lot. What what's it like in Madison? What's it? What really is there? And you know, one of the things that uh, I've learned early on is that really the assembly floor is a show, um, and a lot more work gets done off the floor than on the floor. And you go back in the parlor and you uh, hang out with people from every political stripe and you really just do get along. Uh, and sometimes that isn't reported. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of travel, a lot of time spent, a lot of emails. You know, I find myself when I hang up with somebody who's positive and upbeat to always be really energized. And the inverse is true too. Sometimes you have phone calls that uh, phone calls or emails that are that are that are energy draining but overall it's been a real fun experience and it really is great in Madison to see so many people who are engaged in the process who are really true good great Americans and they are heroes in their community they're problem solvers they're people who dream and think in terms of big concepts and that that really is what's fun and interesting about being in, in the assembly. And you know, there are probably some hard votes that I will have to take at, at, at points along the way, and, and those are difficult. And in any case, I won't, uh, I won't belabor you with what they are because uh, that would just not be uh, good form tonight. But you know, the night I turned 20, I uh, stayed awake all night. This is now 27 years ago, I guess. Stayed awake all night and wrote out goals for my life. I, you know, I had a whole lot of things that I wanted to do, my, my bucket list, so to say. And as I look back over that list of goals, 
quite a few of them I haven't achieved, quite a few others I have, and I've done some things that uh, would have surprised even me, I suppose, back then. But one of the things in that set of goals was, and this is what I want to talk to you uh, all about tonight, is just a, a core set of guiding principles, you know, things that you wouldn't change for anything. That's what really gives us as individuals dignity. Again, no matter the political spectrum, those core principles and understanding where you come from has been important for me. And I'm really big into family history. I, I know where 800 of my direct ancestors actually lived, what they did for occupations for the most part, dating back into the 1500s. And I won't regale you with stories, but I will give you just one. And that is my uh, eighth great grandpa, Hans Hare, who settled in uh, eastern Pennsylvania in 1711, built a brand new stone house right along the main east-west uh, trail for trading. It was an, an Indian trail. Built this brand new stone house, and today it stands as the oldest structure in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. It's part of their historical society. If you ever go out there, you can see the house my eighth great grandpa built. But he, the first two winters that they were in America, not the United States at that point, but America, it was incredibly cold winters. And uh, literally, the, 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 the stories and the record shows that they had the, uh, the natives, the Indians, in their living room to give them warmth and um, you know, to, to keep them from freezing because all they had was longhouses. And it's any number of stories like that from my ancestors that I could tell you that just kind of give me the sense of responsibility and duty and you all can reach back and, and find those stories as well in your, in your heritages. So the core principles that would guide me and I think are fairly universal would be the dignity of all of human life, including the jobless, the homeless, and you know, the other, these are legislative principles, if you will. The more local the decision is, I believe the better it is. And personal freedom and liberty are um, incredibly strong principles for me, and I think as long as they don't hurt others, uh, those, those um, principles should be upheld. One of the things that I told my kids many times over the years was, be an asset to your community. And that's why chambers exist, because you are all assets in this community. But as they, even as they were little kids growing up, I said, think about it. Are you taking more out of society than you're giving? Are you taking more out of your family than you're giving? Be an asset to society one way or the other. And I'm happy to say that uh, so far most of my kids have done that. And that's just the way of, of good training. One of the other things that, uh, that I know is important to many people is an intellectual curiosity and an intellectual honesty. And that's one of the things that uh, I, I, I trust will continue to guide my career no matter where that takes me. It's, it's always asking what I don't understand. If there's a conflict with people, and those of you who've been in business you know, and, and in life in general, you understand that there are sometimes conflicts and you can be intellectually dishonest or close your mind to opposing points of view, or you can open them up. And you have to sometimes ask, as I do, what is it that I don't understand about something? And I'm going to just go into not a, not a, not a political thought, but I just want to give you something on the, the, the state budget, because that was one of the first questions. You ask what it's like to be a legislator. This is one of the first things that I did was I went down and said, I don't understand a thing about this. Let me start to understand. And the only way that I could get my head around the state budget was to take six zeros off of it and apply it to my family's income. Um, and if you understand, again, this isn't a judgment about where the money should go or any of that, please just roll with me here. Um, the, the state budget is $35 billion. You take six zeros off, you get 35000 now most of us can remember a day when we probably made 35000 and so we can get our heads around that concept. Had uh, the Legislative Fiscal Bureau chief in Bob Lang and I said, okay, what's the House of Wisconsin worth? Just so I can understand you know, what kind of condition and position we're in. He said, well, the House of Wisconsin is worth $40,800 if you take six zeros off. So we got an income of 35000 the house is worth $40,800. We've got a higher net worth of $2,400 this year than we did before. 
And we put, in the last three years, $17,400 into our retirement fund that's now worth $84,000. Again, add the six zeros whenever you want to. Bottom line of it is we're doing very well in Wisconsin, and I think that uh, that is uh, probably the most political statement I'll make. But uh, it's in, in another thing that I am passionate about is removing barriers for business. I understand as a small business owner, kind of what is important, I believe, at least from my perspective, and what isn't. And if it's complex, make it more simple. And if it costs less, it might be a good thing too. And there's no doubt that we are undergoing some real changing times. If you look at any field, education is undergoing a, a, a transformation. There's just no other way to look at it. I serve on uh, five committees. One of them is workforce development. It's probably the one I'm the most passionate about, although I wouldn't trade any of the others either. But I'm very impressed with how the tech colleges and in, in meeting with uh, uh, presidents of tech colleges and school district superintendents over the course of the last couple of months, how their vision, they've got a, a, an excellent vision of giving people back the dignity of a job and going home at night and having um, you know, food on the table, bills paid, family around them, those things are important. And they also are having a lot of flexibility these days. So vision and flexibility is what I see as the hallmarks of where we're going. And really that's the end of education. The end of education to me is to be gainfully employed in a, in, in a, in a job that, that gives you the satisfaction that, uh, that you can go home at night, as I said before. So education, and two of my daughters are educators, so I certainly understand the, uh, some of the challenges with regards to that. It's really a matter of teachers catching the vision of their students. And I attribute a lot of my uh, early on success, and even now, to my first grade teacher who, uh, who, who really saw in me something, she wrote it on my report card, and I literally still have my report cards. I've scanned it in. She said she's never seen a kid with a tremendous thirst for knowledge like that. Now, I'm not bragging about myself, I'm bragging about my teacher here. My teacher who saw in me something that really made my, my life what it is now, and, 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 and show, uh, uh, she showed a spotlight on that. The other thing that, of course, is undergoing a real transformation is healthcare. Uh, there's no doubt. I've had a lot of people in in the healthcare industry, and I met uh, Dean Hoffman here earlier from uh, Security Health Plan. I'm sure there's a lot of other medical professionals in here as well. And you guys are really undergoing a major transformation. The budgets, the margins are tight. Um, there's a lot of competition. It's fierce. It's growing. So. <laughs> Education, healthcare, major transformations. And businesses too. I mean, it's no secret that margins are tight and, and those who adapt and businesses will always find a way to adapt. There's, there's a lot of opportunities out there and I'm, I'm just excited to be, um, I guess, part of, part of a, a good chamber in Wausau and you have an excellent chamber here. Fact is, I'm surprised so many of you came out tonight. It's uh, kind of interesting to see uh, that you braved the, the weather. So it takes, it takes vision and leadership in education, in healthcare, in business. You could go on and name the things that it takes leadership in. It also takes leadership in politics, really. And, you know, that's, sometimes those are antonyms. They're not said in the same sentence. And I, I would uh, just say that those who do catch the vision and understand the changing times will be, um, well, will serve their communities well. You know, we can do things that our ancestors never dreamed of. Um, you know, we can do business from anywhere in the world. I visit my daughters in Taiwan three weeks out of every year, have for the last six years. And I can literally get on the internet there and communicate with my, my, uh, my management team back home or my office in Madison this past December. I can order, you know, anything from anywhere and get it shipped to anywhere. That wasn't something Hans Herr, my uh, 1711 ancestor, ever thought of doing. And they say that we can even uh, order pizza or beer and have it uh, delivered in a drone before too long, which is, I'm kind of looking forward to that. But. 
You know, we have one of the other things that I think will transform us in the next number of years is that we're getting into, I'd like to say it's the energy age. Um, we had the agrarian age about 7,000 years ago. People quit being hunters and gatherers and started to farm, lived in communities. And that lasted until uh, two to 300 years ago, and we turned that into the industrial age. And now in the last 50 years, we say it's the information age. I really think that as we look ahead and as we grasp the opportunities that are ahead of us, we'll see another age coming, and that is the energy age. And I don't know how else to say this other than that we have abundant energy in the, the, the United States and really in the world. Not necessarily natural gas and, um, and solar and wind, although those are probably bridges to take us to a new future. Um, and I don't want to get all wild-eyed and crazy and, and uh, talk about uh, you know, atomic fusion, but I will for just a minute because I can and I've got two or three minutes left. Um, <laughs> If you, if you think about it, think about the uh, atomic fission, of course, is explosions. Atomic fusion is colliding the nuclei of atoms. And hopefully this won't lose you. I, I trust it won't, but I was, I, I'm just so enamored of the, uh, the, the way that there's abundant energy. If you think about everything that we see here, it really is 90% or way more than 90%. It's hollow. It's just the energy that's holding everything together. Let me just try to illustrate. You take a grapefruit. If you were to take a grapefruit and each atom within the grapefruit, you blew it up to the size of a blueberry. Still with me? Grapefruit atoms, blueberry size. That grapefruit would be as big as the earth itself. Okay? So now you think about you're driving across, you know, from here to Madison, you're driving across blueberries. They're atoms and you're only seeing a part of it. But how much of that is actually, that atom is, is really just an energy field with a little bitty nuclei. Nucleus, nuclei, I'm not sure, I should have looked that up. But uh, if, if you, if you want to know how much solid is actually within that atom, you, take, you have to take that blueberry and blow it up to a football stadium size. Set that blueberry into Lambeau Field. And the actual matter within that is the size of a marble. I know I lost some of you, but trust me, what's holding everything together, the only reason I'm standing here is because of the energy in this platform. The energy is absolutely everywhere. How will we capture that in the years ahead? How will we change? How will we adapt? Just one more little quick factoid about the, the nuclei. And if you had a one foot box, just one foot cube box, how many cars could you put in there with only the solid matter within the atom? You're never gonna guess, so I'll tell you. 6.2 billion. Give every man, woman, and child almost in the entire world a car and shrink it down to just the matter itself, you could stick it into a one-foot box. And of course, that one-foot box would weigh as much as 6.2 billion cars. It's amazing. When you have a car crash next time, just appeal to the uh, person that you run into, why weren't you just hollow? Because you're really, you know, you're just an energy field coming my way. We have abundant energy. How do we find it? How do we get there? I don't know. There's people. There are people that are working on it. Um, the thing that I like about being an American, and, and I love being from Wisconsin as well, every time my wheels touch down at Central Wisconsin Airport, I'm home. It doesn't matter if it's as cold as it is and wet and rainy and all those kind of things. Something about being from here. But in America, we dream big. We think big. We solve problems. We find challenges. We overcome them. In Wisconsin Rapids, you're no different. You're incredibly... Uh, blessed by having uh, Renaissance learning here. I just heard the news on that this morning, and I don't know if that's uh, you know that's a that's that to me is a is a good development. You've got a you've got a paper mill potential there. You've got the biggest thing that we all have in each and every community, but here is no different: is minds that can fix things, solve problems, dream big, adapt, and change our area and uh, and who we are. So I appreciate very much uh, you all having me in, and uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your dinner.
right, very good. Thank you for the comments. This one thing that occurred to me while I was listening to the uh, to the speaker we're talking about the various size of things, and just to, uh, maybe put an, another little perspective on it. I heard this morning when I was driving to work that January was the fourth warmest month, fourth warmest January globally on record. So it shows you that even though we've had a different situation here, we're part of a much larger whole if it's the fourth warmest January in history globally. All right, thank you again for your comments. Especially appreciate the comments about the problem solvers and people who get into things and try to make a difference. And so at this point, we're going to try to use that as a transitioning into our awards program. And I have the pleasure to introduce the recipients of the first award, which is the Community Spirit Award. First of all, the Community Spirit Award recognizes people that have outstanding volunteer spirits and make a significant impact in the community. One of the things that I've always been impressed with, with Wisconsin Rapids and Southwood County area, is that there is a sense of community. And when people see a need, recognize a need, no matter where it is, they pitch in, they take, take things into their own hands, and they make things happen for others who may have a short-term need or an unfortunate situation that needs to be addressed. So the people that we're going to be recognizing tonight are tremendously um, deserving of this award, but they also represent a much larger group of people who do these types of things on a regular basis. And that's a great aspect of this community. So. Tonight, we're pleased to honor an outstanding husband and wife team as our 2013 Community Spirit Award winners. A little bit of background. Halloween for Cancer was started in 2009 for Lacey Laskowski. She was the daughter of Mike and Doris Laskowski, good friends of Mike and Benita Velasse. Lacey's battle with cancer hit home to Mike. He had lost his sister, the same cancer as Lacey had in 1986. The Halloween for Cancer benefit was not only for Lacey, but in remembrance of his sister, Anita. That year, their event raised $1,800 for Lacey, and she passed away, unfortunately, later on that year. The following year, in 2010, a family member of the Laskowskis, Deanna Jacoby, knew a little girl, Hannah, who had leukemia. Deanna asked the Wolosics to do the benefit for her again, and they said, sure. And for those of you who know Mike and Benita, that's not at all surprising. They earned, through the event the second year, $5,000 for Hannah that year, and good news is that she's doing great and in remission. In 2011, the Halloween for Cancer was changed to Halloween Aid. The Wolosics had feedback from the community that the benefit should not just be for people with cancer, that there were other people in the community that had misfortunes that should be considered for the benefit. The benefit in 2011 was done for Jason Seligowski, a young man burnt in the beer and mill explosion, and the event that year earned $6,000 for Jason, and as well, he's doing well. In 2012, the fourth year of Halloween aid was done for a three-year-old little boy Waylon Villers, who had an inoperable brain tumor. He's a great-grandson of Helen Ponchuk of the Little Pink Restaurant, which was a pillar in our community. Their event, the Wolosics event, that year raised $7,000 for Waylon. And sadly, he lost his fight and went to heaven in August of 2013. And now we're to Halloween aid in 2013, year five. It has been growing, that event, each year but in 2013 it exploded. It was done for Hadley Barron, the granddaughter of Dave and Nancy Barron, good friends of the Wolosics. Her benefit was the biggest event ever, um, making $10,000 for Hadley. She's still having treatments for her leukemia at the Children's Hospital in Madison. I've been ple uh, pleased to know Mike and Benita for a long time through joint things that our kids were involved in. 
and the type of commitment that they're doing to events like this and the selflessness that they exhibit has been something that they've shown throughout the time that I know them. They're the type of people that get things done when they see an opportunity, don't want a lot of recognition, but they also make a difference every day. But the success that they have, and they would tell you that, it wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the support that our community has given them as well. Stores with donations of candy to give out to the kids, dance team from uh, Dance with Pam that's been there every year to dance, the banner donators, advertising done on radio, television, billboards, and newspaper, print shops that donated posters, and all the people that did baking for the bake sale. Photographers, video people, it's become quite an event. And let's not forget about the people that worked the night of the event, the list goes on and on. So without the help of community, the event wouldn't have grown. It has become a community-oriented event, and it'll be continuing to help out someone in the community in need. So please join me tonight in celebrating our 2013 Community Spirit Award winners, Mike and Benita Walasik. Our second Community Spirit of the Word is going out to Kathy Rash. And this is the, in the words of Kathy Rash. War woke me up. Last spring, my sister had a drug bust happen next door. She was busy at her stove, and the neighbor called her to inform her that a drug bust was going on. And then two officers had the, um, the perpetrator down handcuffing him with a drug dog present at her back door. She had noticed drug traffic many times and reported to officials, but not much happened. But this day was different, too close. I phoned her later and then she calmly told me the story. I was in disbelief. I was furious that we have, lived, have to live in this environment. We have lived here 50 years or so, and crime is absolutely getting worse. She also told me that there was traffic on the other side of her house. A prostitution business was going on there. I immediately phoned our alderman, Chad Burrell, police chief, Boyer and Amir, and Amir Irwin. I described the situation to them and requested some action by the means of follow-up. Mayor Irwin called the meeting together at City Hall with the Police Chief, Alderman Morrill, Assistant Johns, Assistant Police Chief Johns, and Team Planning and Zoning. I reminded the mayor that when he campaigned for mayor and stopped at our house to ask for our vote, that after telling him of my dismay with the west side and this area looking run down in the crime, we see committed. He quickly, quickly promised if elected, he would place this first on his agenda, and he did. So this was the most awesome meeting I've ever attended. Police Chief Foyer brought a brochure from Nina, Wisconsin, where he just attended a conference on how to reduce crime by cleaning up clutter in a city. I was fired up and ready to get started. We ordered safety green shirts, created flyers to notify the residents of the project, and went on WFHR twice to promote the event. Also went on Carl Hoodley's show with the mayor to boost the support. I went to various local businesses for food donations and financial donations, and we appreciated all their support. Family Natural Foods let us use their restrooms and electricity that day. Then Chad and I rode around Ward 1 to see which residents we could help out that day. Many agreed and responded positively. Well, needless to say, this started the campaign like a spark plug. On May 18, 2013, we had our first cleanup of Ward 1. After more meetings with the city officials, including Wisconsin Street Department, Wisconsin Rapids Street Department, Park and Rec, Sign Department, City Attorney, we put together a neighborhood watch. We had signs placed in four areas and had support of the Street Department with trucks, trimming of trees, shredders, and four dumpsters for large clutter. We got permission forms ready, found 40 volunteers, and the day was successful with one semi filled with electronics. Over 200 tires, 20 residents were helped with removal of clutter. 
and insisted with mowing lawns, trimming shrubs and trees, much to their delight. The two inspectors drove around to remind residents of any violation. Because the first work day was successful, we had another fall clean up day in October. It was on a smaller scale, but nevertheless, the same was accomplished. This time, Subway, Grandpa's Mall, donated sandwiches for all workers, and on the 17th Avenue North. The Love Your Block initiative started. We have been having meetings at the City Hall on the third Thursday of every month, excluding November and December. We have a solid group of approximately 30 loyal neighbors that attend and express their concerns and have requested speakers from the Landlords Association, City Attorney Sue Schill, Assistant Attorney Tim Bieber, Planning and Zoning Tegan, and the new Inspector, Police Chief and Officers, and the Mayor. Nick Flanagan, Mayor's Assistant, has attended faithfully with great feedback. Chad Rural has been absolutely supportive in every step of this process and we have plans to continue the neighborhood program. My sister's neighbors are gone on both sides. One, she has spoken to the landlords, and the other, and the information had been helpful to both of them. Two, the landlord wants my sister to call her with any shenanigans in the future. This is our goal, be aware of violations, report them to the new inspector, working with him and make Ward 1 a beautiful historic area that we are and once was. After watching, a video, we are part of what makes Wisconsin Rapids be a jewel in the state. And our next camp is um, proud to be on May 17th. Please help me um, bring up Kathy Rash and congratulations on your Community Spirit Award. I want to say anything uh, you guys know <laughs> I'm always talking uh, anyhow thank you so much my team that helped me put this together uh, without the help of Chad Whirl who was my right arm and doing all of this and the mayor who followed up on his promise and he was so cool because I said you know Zach Mayor Zach uh, you promised me at my front door that you would help me out and he did and you can see the successes in <clears throat> It's only just begun. So thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Next up, we have the Ambassador of the Year Award. And this year, it's with great pleasure that I get to announce the 2000 Ambassador of the Year Award. This year's recipient does not know that they were voted on by their fellow peers um, and ambassadors. Heather Gigi from US Bank is the recipient this year for 2013. Heather has been an ambassador for quite a few years. If I need anything, all I have to do is call and ask. She is a kind-hearted, fun-loving woman and will do anything for you. I'm glad to be able to call her my friend. She is married to Pat and she has a son, Alex. Both Pat and Alex have attended numerous chamber events and volunteers. Volunteer. They work as a family at events and we really appreciate all their help. Heather likes to promote the chamber and community by being involved in annual meeting, Mardi Gras business expo, working women's luncheons, lunch by the river, dairy breakfast, Cranberry Blossom Fest, Summer Hammer Golf Outing, Downtown Grand Affair, Rekindle the Spirit, Nkusa Hometown Christmas, calling for donations and sponsorships for all events. She was newly elected this morning to the Heart of Wisconsin um, Board of Directors. And other community involvement includes South Dakota County Snow Sculpture event. Um, they adopted two dogs and fostered a terminal ill coon home, tree planting project, avid Halloween witch, her husband says, momhood, and so much more. We appreciate U.S. Bank supporting Heather being an ambassador and new board member, and congratulations, Heather, on a well-deserved award. Oh. 
the Shining Star portion of our evening. The Shining Star, Star recognizes a service organization or public institution with a dedication to community service and leadership. For over 86 years, the Kiwanis Club has been active in helping children strive for more. From the Summer Youth Outdoor Day that welcomes over 300 kids and their parents to participate in over 22 different activities, and the Winter Youth Outdoor Days that welcomed over 165 kids and their parents to participate in over 15 different outdoor activities. This gives the community the opportunity to try various activities without the expense while giving children an opportunity to learn while exercising in a fun way. In addition to the Youth Outdoors event, the Kiwanis host their annual Easter egg hunt at Mead and Winter Fields each year, where over 300 kids experience the adrenaline of the hunt. It serves, ages four, it serves four age groups, so everyone gets a chance. The Wisconsin Rapids Kiwanis Club hosts a Farm City Night and Just Friends Dinner to celebrate the individuals that help them succeed through nutrition and life experiences. And once a month during the school year, the Kiwanis Club honors a student of the month from one of our area high schools. What an amazing group of individuals. In addition, during the summer, a student of the month is honored from the Boys and Girls Club. And Kiwanis invests in a number of nonprofit events throughout the year when requests come in. They give an area high school senior a $1,000 scholarship and also supports the Mid State Technical College Foundation with an additional scholarship. Through the year, the Kiwanis Club receives funding and help through their peanut drive and their food trailer. You've probably seen them down at lunch by the river, it's one of my favorite stands. The Kiwanis Act Club actions really do speak volumes. Please join me in welcoming up the Kiwanis Club, our Shining Star Award winner. Thank you very much. We do appreciate it. We know we've got the uh, best service club in town, but uh, you may not know we also have the most fun. And I just, as long as I have this many bodies in front of me, I want to make sure, in case you haven't ever been asked, we need you. We need members. When you see that picture of our club, that's all there is. We do all the work with just those few people. And uh, we, need to, we need some more people that want to have fun and help kids at the same time. So. Uh, talk to any Kiwanis member or just on any Wednesday night, come on out and just say, I'm here to see what I can do. All right, thank you. Now we are on to the Citizen of the Year Award. The Citizen of the Year is one of the greatest honors the Chamber of Commerce has the privilege of presenting to someone that has made a significant impact on the greater Wisconsin Rapids area. This year's Citizen of the Year exemplifies so many attributes of service above self. He is a warm and welcoming gentleman that is everywhere with a broad smile and hearty laugh. His work ethic is superior and understanding of the issues of business in the community broad and deep. Philip Brown is the fourth of what would be five baby boomer boys born to Gil and Betty Brown in St. Paul, Minnesota. His sense for business was developed during his youth as he served as the neighborhood paperboy. Later, while still living in St. Paul and working in the retail business, Phil's life was about to change. It was there that he met Mary Brazo from Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. <laughs> Phil and Mary would make their home on the R.S. Brazo Cranberry Marsh, now known as Glacial Lake Cranberries, and raise their children, Stephen and Allison. Phil took quickly to learning the business of agriculture and cranberries hands-on, while also completing a bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. Their working Cranberry Marsh store and Stone Cottage have become a tourist attraction known around the world. Each year, over a thousand people come out to Glacial Lake Cranberries to ride the Berry Bus and experience all the beautiful marsh has to offer. Love of the cranberry industry would blossom within Phil as he delved into the history and artifacts. Through visits to antique stores, flea markets, and eBay, he has collected an impressive museum of tools of the industry, including many that have been donated to the Southwood County Historical Society and those that reside in the Brown's den of antiquity. This passion for antiques and history led Phil into a long-standing association with the Southwood County Historical Society. Phil gave tirelessly of his time serving on the board of directors and as the president of this fine organization. The results of his efforts shine throughout the museum grounds and building. 
Phil has also joined with local historians Paul Rose, Marshall Bueller, and Dave Engel to lend voice to the careful transcription and production of local history DVDs. Through Phil's leadership, all of the artifacts at the Southwood County Historical Society are being digitalized. The additional list of organizations that have benefit, benefited from the expertise are, of Phil are numerous. Phil has generously donated his talents to the JCs, Noon Rotary, Boys and Girls Club, United Way, Town of Cranmore, the Wisconsin Rapids Area Convention and Visitors Bureau, and the Wisconsin Rapids Area Chamber of Commerce. Phil's philosophy of service is simple. The world is run by those who show up. Thank you for showing up, Phil Brown, and providing such great leadership to the heart of Wisconsin area. We are blessed to have you. is uh, really, really quite an honor. Thank you. Thank you all very, very much for this uh, very special honor tonight. Um, I have so many people to thank for this wonderful honor, and uh, one of them, of course, is my good friend Mike Mayer, who put my name in for nomination for this, and uh, Mikey, thank you very, very much. And uh, I think uh, in order to uh, get out of here at a decent hour, I'd better stick to my script, or I could ramble on all night, as most of you know, especially after a couple of glasses of wine. So uh, I'll stick to the script. But uh, I want to thank all of those uh, who thought I was worthy of such an honor to be Citizen of the Year. Uh, all of us who give back to our community uh, are not driven by the recognition that we receive. But uh, when an honor such as this is bestowed upon you, it is a very humbling experience, to say the least. Uh, I share this award with, uh, with all that have shared my passion for this community in which we all live, work, and play. Uh, what drives me to, uh, to do what I do? It's about passion. And I love this community, and I hope it shows. Uh, because uh, we've been able to do so much, uh, so many of us have been able to do so much together. But the passion that brought me here, uh, my lovely wife, Mary, and her love for this area, and her family's Cranberry Marsh and its natural resources have really brought us back to the Wisconsin Rapids area. We are a team, and we share many of the same passions, so uh, thank you, honey. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mary's been there uh, behind me 100% of the way. Uh, passion for the Southwood County area led me to say yes when asked to join the United Way board many years ago. You can't get a bigger bang for your charitable dollar when you give to the United Way. Uh, passion for kids led me to say yes when asked to join uh, the task force to start the Boys and Girls Club of the Wisconsin Rapids area. Uh, this passion for kids and a lot of support from others, many of you in this room tonight, uh, is really the, the support from others and our shared passion that has made the Boys and Girls Club a fundamental part of our community still to this day. Passion for the prosperity of our business community. Uh, led me to say yes when asked to join the Chamber of Commerce Board as well. Also, passion for sharing and engaging others in this beautiful place we live in uh, led me to say yes to join the Convention and Visitors Bureau Board. Passion for sharing the rich history and the beauty of the cranberry industry led Mary and me to open Glacial Lake Cranberries to visitors from around the world. It's been a very, very special experience. Passion for the unique town of Cranmore led me to say yes when asked to get involved in local government. Thanks, Russ. <laughs> uh, also, passion for the history of the Southwood County area led me to say yes when asked to join the Southwood County Historical Society Board. So, you see, this honor is not about me. It's about those that have engaged me. It's all about us. And so many people in this room today, we've been involved with any number of these organizations that I've mentioned. So it's not just about me, but it's about us. 
And I also want to recognize uh, those that uh, uh, share the passion for this community by helping others and for helping the kids and for helping the economic strength of the area and the sharing of our community with tourists from around the world and for preserving and sharing our rich local history. So many of you uh, share in that shared vision. So thank you all very much for your part in uh, making this such a great place to live, work, and play. And I also uh, want to uh, recognize those that uh, had the vision to start the chamber leadership class, which really got me off on the right foot in getting involved in our local community. Uh, the leadership class uh, engages others to effectively uh, lead within their community. As a member of the third uh, leadership class that graduated in 1991, I want to uh, thank uh, you for keeping the program alive and well to this day, and the graduating class in 2014 will be the 25th anniversary of that great program and many, many community leaders have gone through that program. Many of you are here tonight. So we live in a great area. We have a uh, rich and colorful past and we have an exciting future. Uh, over the past 30 years, I was given any number of opportunities to get involved and engage in this wonderful community. Tonight, I am being recognized for those years of engagement. I humbly accept this honor and put forth this challenge to the new generation of passionate people. You are the next us. So you will someday be our future citizens of the year. So once again, thank you all very, very much. Good evening. This next award is for the 2003 Entrepreneur Developer of the Year. This award recognizes the initiation of economic growth, innovative efforts to adapt to marketplace change, and community service and leadership. In June 2012, Ruby Reds LLC was created to offer customers across the nation a gourmet retail line of sweet and dried cranberry products. Wisconsin is the nation's leader in cranberry production and Ruby Reds is proud to feature the finest quality sweet and dried cranberries grown and produced in central Wisconsin. Family friends for some time, Steve, Kurt, Kelly, and Marcy jumped into the opportunity to build a family business in Wisconsin Rapids. As the cranberry is Wisconsin's number one fruit crop in value and acreage, it is their pleasure to highlight the area's famous cranberry industry in a retail setting the first of its kind in the heart of central Wisconsin. Building on an established gourmet line of products, the owners, along with their four children and three part-time employees, combined talents, time, and a lot of hard work to introduce Ruby Reds to the community. They have been met with a multitude of encouraging words and business from customers. Ruby Reds customers have been great in showing up to buy their weekly favorites and making purchases to share with family and friends around the country and world. The facility packs and ships products throughout the country and through their website, rubyreds.com, continues to reach and service new customers every week. Each season sees Ruby Reds growing and increasing their product line. The retail store now offers artisan cheeses, quality meat products, and locally baked artisan breads and bakery items. Team Ruby Reds is excited to be a one-of-a-kind specialty market in the community and to be the premier location where customers can find high-quality, Wisconsin-made, and delicious cranberry and specialty food products in a warm and inviting atmosphere. Ruby Reds services include retail, wholesale, fundraising, corporate gifting, custom and private labeling and shipping. The family at Ruby Reds is excited to be growing locally and nationally. Partnerships with local Wisconsin Rapids area businesses and other businesses in the state include ODC, Hidden Creek Kitchens, Fiddle Bread Baking Company, Quality Plus Printing, Pete's Meat Packing Service in Rudolph, Nasonville Dairy of Marshfield, Nolchek's Meats in Thorpe, 
and Sugar Brook Farms in Verona. One of the best parts of building Ruby Reds has been connecting with the people. Ruby's Red, Ruby Reds customer base is far reaching, local residents stopping in for buy one get one free offers on sweet and dried cranberries, snowbirds calling from Florida to refill their favorite chocolates, the Encourage Community Foundation gathering salsa and cheese with which to welcome visitors, Wisconsin Rapids Public School music parents raising money through the fundraiser program, and out-of-town visitors from Iowa to India and Texas to Turkey. The family at Ruby Reds is pleased to support the local community and be a part of growth here in Wisconsin Rapids. Connections with the local area include support, donations, and business opportunities with the Wisconsin Rapids Rafters, the Boys and Girls Club, local school districts and sports programs, Wisconsin Rapids Visitor Center, and Riverview Hospital Auxiliary, Auxiliary, to name a few. Working together with customers, businesses, and organizations, we hope to continue to be a part of what makes Central Wisconsin a great place to live, work, and visit. The success of Ruby Reds comes in part from the local community and all of the customers that come to Ruby Reds to find their favorite cranberries. And in closing, I would like to personally add, each of these individuals bring their unique area of expertise to Ruby Reds, but they all share in the same dedication and passion for their families, friends, business, and community. If you've had the pleasure of stopping in to see Ruby Reds, you undoubtedly receive the finest customer service and notice the extreme pride that is showcased in their store and products. Knowing each of them, I can't think of anyone more deserving of such an award and wish them great success. I am honored and privileged to be presenting this award tonight, so without further ado, please join me in congratulating Kurt and Kelly Hyman and Stephen Marcy Berlin as Entrepreneur Developers of the Year. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. We do rock, paper, scissors a lot uh, as a family and as a business, so here I am. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank um, a number of people, starting uh, first and foremost with our families. Um, the four of us as friends decided to take this opportunity and, and jump into it, um, and how appropriate to follow up Phil Brown. and. Um, the wonderful cranberry industry, that we are here to showcase exactly that, not just for um, our little town, but for the state of Wisconsin as well. Yeah, we um, need to thank our children because without this and them, um, unbeknownst to them, jumping into quite an adventure, um, Steve and I have Alex and Emma. Um, Alex was not able to be here tonight, he's away at school. And Kurt and Kelly have uh, Peyton and Ellie. And um, the four of them have helped from the very beginning uh, all the way up until Saturdays uh, through the winters, helping pack yeah. <laughs> Sorry. pack and uh, label and count and inventory and work the crash register and welcome customers to our store. Without them, um, this would not have been as much fun and it wouldn't have been as much of a success as it is. It was an opportunity for us to try something new together, but what it's turned into is an opportunity for our community and for, um, if I may say, the state of Wisconsin to represent what is a great thing for all of us, and that is the cranberry industry. We've, we've been welcomed beyond belief by the community. And part of um, our success comes as well to the staff that we have. We're a small business, but we're a big team with a big heart. And um, we, I for sure need to thank Karen Fritchie and Lynn Kozeski, who are both here tonight. Without them, this not, would not have happened as it did. And Mary Braun could not be here um, with us tonight. But those three employees, our family, and then at the base of it all is the community. Our customers are amazing. They've been encouraging from the start. 
when we were off in a little uh, freeze, freezer space. <laughs> uh, when we very first started in the summer of 2012, uh, people came and found us. They needed their cranberries, they wanted them, they wanted to bring their guests uh, to what they knew to be a, a quality product. And then when we moved into our um, beautiful new facility and retail space on 8th Street, uh, the welcome from everybody at that location has been amazing. People bring their families from out of town. They send things out of town, around the country, around and actually around the world. We're thrilled with the reception, and we are so thankful to everyone that has encouraged us all along the way. And, and we love sharing what we have to offer with everybody that comes in our door. Laura Nelson and her staff were so kind to encourage us through the visitor center and connect us to everyone that comes to the area. So we thank them very much as well. Thank you, Laura. And that, I think that should be where I end it. Steve's <laughs> saying yes. Okay, I talk too much as well. All right. Thank you, everybody, family, staff, and community. We appreciate it. All right, here's a test. What do you see? A uh, bird, bird tie table. Oh, somebody's smart. Is, this is not a Warshock test. If you saw some ship in there, you're wrong. It's bird's eye maple. Bird's eye maple, very rare. It's actually a defect in hard maple, sugar maple. Grows probably mostly in the UP. You can find it elsewhere. One out of every thousand trees has this. Very rare. Next, what's this? It's not an oyster. Abalone, close, good enough, you get, you get half credit. All right, so this is the Innovative Business of the Year Award, and this business puts things like this together to make something totally new and totally unique. Um, Guess what it is? Pool cues. All right. So how many of you have shot pool? All right. So we pick up the thing that's sitting there by the, you know, on the other side of the bar. And uh, we play pool. Now, did you know the market out there for pool cues is 12 million a year? OK. So, how do you make your business innovative enough to be successful in that kind of a market throughout out the world? Well, for those enthusiasts who play a lot, what they value is something that is an expression of themselves. So they might go to a website and take a look. They might go to a store and take a look, such as the one we have locally, Jacoby pool cues, and what, what they might find is uh, several ones that kind of they really like the feel and, and all that, but if they're really discerning, this is where this company really shines because they can work hand in hand with the best in order to make a one-of-a-kind custom-made pool cue. So, Jacoby Q, uh, Custom Cues Incorporated was founded in 1982 as Dave's Q Service. Dave and his son Shane started doing repairs in the basement. So many things start in the basement, don't they? Uh, when they were ready for more challenges, they ventured on to tackle the task of creating their first Q, and they put their talents and imaginations to work, aided by great Q makers. Now, what Brandon tells me is that actually there's a lot of secrets that you know, it's kind of like fishing, you know, what, where'd you find the fish? Well, you know, it's, yeah, and Skunk Creek, you know. So it's not a, exactly the most sharing community when it comes to uh, the secrets of the trade. But they earned themselves membership in the American Q Makers Association. Shane went on to the Army in 1986, then to college in industrial engineering, and Dave's other uh, son, Brandon, took over at that point. 1992, they built a shop next to Dave's home and moved out of the basement. And it, we still haven't gotten a battery replacement. Sorry. 
They moved out of the basement. Didn't take long for Jacob B. Custom Cues to grow even more, and they moved down to downtown Nakusa. All of the work from start to finish takes place in either their Nakusa location or Dave's shop. By doing all of the work in the United States, Dave felt it was important to become more active with the American Cue Makers Association. He is currently the president of the association, in fact. He can find. He can be found at most of the um, major pool tournaments and cue shows throughout the United States displaying cues and keeping an eye on what the player needs and wants are. They, all, uh, they have players all over the country using their cues and in fact the world. Uh, in fact, if you go and Google it, don't do it now, but if you go Google uh, pool cues on the first page of 200, or I'm sorry, 2 million hits, you'll find an ad for Jacoby pool cues. He always finds time to make sure the cue is up to the standards that he set for himself when he was just making one cue a year. Currently, Brandon runs the operation and uh, the award-winning cue making duties, and he, he is following his dad's footsteps by continuing to be innovative and bringing the very best Jacoby has to offer to the game of pool. Please join me in congratulating them. Boy, I guess I don't know what to say, <laughs> except it's been a uh, long ways from putting tips on, a lot of miles to this point here. And I guess uh, Peggy, Sharon, they're our wives. Without their support, there's no way you could do what you, what we do, the miles we put on and the things we do. <laughs> and I'd also like to, uh, Thank the city of Nakusa. That's been a great place for us to do business. Uh, it's been a wonderful place, and I, I think anybody that's looking for a place of business, they should they should take a look at Nakusa. It's really really a wonderful place. And our business now is in the shadow of the paper mill where I used to work, so it's it's quite an honor to be there. So I was going to have Brandon give a little speech, but he said, "Don't you dare, Dad." <laughs> so, uh, yeah, on our behalf, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Shannon Buss, and it's my privilege to present the Business of the Year Award, which recognizes a business that has had a positive economic impact on the community, business growth, a dedication to customer service, is innovative and dedicated to community service and leadership. Berkel World Worldwide USA Incorporated is a subsidiary of Superior Plus LP, a $2 billion enterprise headquartered in Canada. Erco has increased the Port Edwards facility employee base by 36% since purchasing the facility in 2005. In 2009, Erco invested $135 million for a major conversion project that eliminated the use of mercury and increased capacity by 45% over 2008 levels. Erco contributes approximately $20 million to the regional economy on an annual basis. In 2013, the plant achieved a 99.97% rating in customer service for 7,850 safe and secure product shipments. In the past five years, Erco has received annual excellence awards from six of seven class one railways. Erco has a long and proud tradition of practicing sustainability under the American Chemistry Council ethic of responsible care. During the time the plant has been in operation, they have achieved a personal best of more than 30 years without a lost time accident. In 2013, Herco received the President's Award from the Chlorine Institute for achieving significant milestones in safety and environment performance over multiple years. Herco is very proud of his employees with regard to community service. 
Urkel employees are one of the highest per capita supporters of the local United Way campaign, and many of its employees serve the community as firefighters, first responders, coaches, referees, and much more. The plan makes itself available to annual tour tours for various groups in the community, and was one of the primary participants in the Chamber's heavy, mus heavy, bus heavy metal bus tour. In an effort to meet challenging market conditions for its chlorine products, Urkel previously announced an $8 million expansion for its hydrochloric acid capacity, which will internally consume 68% of the chlorine production, which means there will be approximately 300 less chlorine shipments per year that travel through the community. The new plant expansion will be commissioned later this year. With present and future considerations for major capital projects, ERCO has shown its confidence in the, in the county and state of Wisconsin as a place to conduct business for the long term. Please join me in congratulating ERCO Worldwide, our 2013 Business of the Year. Thank you, Shannon. Um, there's many people around here that are that serve on committees and serve on teams, and you know when you don't show up for a meeting, you usually get all the actions. Um, I didn't show up for a meeting, and a month later, we found out that we received this award. So <laughs> I'll show up at oh, I'll show up at a few more next year just to make up for the difference. But uh, when we when we uh, shared with the employees. Uh, that we were going to receive the award this year. We were extremely pleased and, and very proud. Certainly, we're, we're uh, proud of our accomplishments and the fact that we have highly technical family supporting positions, you know, for 98 people is something that, that we're proud of and, and certainly uh, uh, shows that in this community, you can be vital and you can sustain yourself over a long period of time. We're proud of our employees' efforts in the community. As Shannon said, we, you know, we've got folks that are coaches and referees and like dogs and cats and birds and you name it. So we uh, basically cover up the, uh, the, the gamut for that. And finally, we're pleased to uh, predict a very bright future for the plant with the current investment. Shannon said $8 million. It was an $18 million project that we just announced. Uh, funny story about an $18 million project. That project should have been running last year and um, we got to a point that the supplier had the main piece of equipment for that project on a truck. They decided to adjust that piece of equipment on the truck and it was a 155,000 pound piece of equipment and they broke a sling and dropped it on the ground and a year later we're still waiting for that piece of equipment. <laughs> And we're one year behind on an $18 million project. So uh, there's a few trials and tribulations to getting where we need to be, but we're getting there. And by the end of this year, we will have that plant commissioned and we will be making twice the amount of hydrochloric acid for this plant. So with all of the, the investment that the company has made, uh, over 200 million now since we moved here in 2005, uh, we feel that, that it positions us to be sustained for many, many years to come, and we're, we're very pleased. We've got a group of our uh, staff sitting over here with us and 94 others that are, are back at the plant or at home this evening uh, waiting to go in tomorrow into work, and I'm going to keep all of you folks from uh, staying here much longer, so we'll just say thank you and uh, safe travel home tonight. Okay, wow. Um, I'm always amazed at the great stories that we have in our community around the businesses that are represented here tonight and as well as the rest of you. Um, first of all, I guess we're to the point where we want to close it and uh, bring the meeting to a close, but we really want to thank all of you for being here. It's very easy in, in today's world to sit at home and let others do the work and wonder why things aren't getting done. And you have chosen to come here tonight to be part of that for whatever the reason, family, friends, but you're part of the business community here and we appreciate your involvement. We appreciate you being here because it's easier, especially on a night like tonight, to stay home. 
we've talked a little bit about you know some of the things Missy Melissa mentioned some of the things that the chamber is working on over the last couple of years we've been fortunate to get a fair amount of feedback from all of you as well as our partners in the community that are trying to make Wisconsin Rapids a vital remain a vital place to be and we've been very keen on reshaping ourselves and continuing to look for ways that we can serve all of you better and continue to move the, the uh, community forward. We know that when you get that notice or bill on a yearly basis for your chamber dues, there's plenty of places to go with that money. There's other places that you can go. We want you to know that we appreciate you spending and investing the money with us. We take that responsibility very seriously. <coughs> And we're constantly looking for ways to add value and bring value to you, whether it be the leads group or some of the other things that have come out of the business retention efforts, our workings that we're doing on a larger part with other uh, uh, entities in the community, whether it be the Co Convention and Visitors Bureau or the Reggie Group or others. So we want your feedback. We want you to know that we care. We appreciate you all, and we're here to serve you and we'll continue to look for ways of bringing value to you. So with that said, we're going to adjourn the meeting and wish you all a safe trip home. And I think Krista has a, just a couple things to say in parting comments. Thank you. We want to thank our Gold Table sponsors, Ameriprise Financial Tremont Blogging Group, Duncan Disability Law, Lester, Smart, Fairman, Fairman Tremel and Hart, New Page, Paper City Savings Triple Gold, Retirement Community of Nakusa, Town of Rome, and Trantal Consulting. Also, um, the raffle drawings will be done. Sharon will have them back there. And we want to thank Anchor Bay, Bar and Grill, Bullseye Credit Union, Domino's, Ochunk Gaming Nakusa, Kelly's Liquor, Key Savings Bank, Mary Kay, Janine Malcolm. Paper City Savings, Ruby Reds, Cheryl Tyron Service. Our dinner sponsors tonight were Current Technologies, Pochunk Gaming Nakusa, Security Hall Plan, and Heartland Farms, and we greatly appreciate their support. Um, March 4th, we will be having a Mardi Gras Business Expo at the Elks Lodge. Um, if you'd like more information, you can give us a call at the Heart of Wisconsin. That's uh, in the legislative breakfast again next Friday. You can still sign up for that. We also would like to, um, the table decoration sponsors, we would like to um, give it out to whoever has the birthday coming up or had passed, so closest birthday, so please take home the flowers with you. Again, we want to thank all the award sponsors, Corenzo North America, Marshall Clinic, Mariani Packing Company, Woodrust Bank, Visit Wisconsin Rapids, Marshall Clinic, Herbal Worldwide, and Missy Technical College. Award winners, if you could please make your way up here, we want to take pictures. Again, thank you for everyone coming out and please drive safely.